Hello again and welcome to another video from the Marketing Study Guide. In this video I'm going to have a look at some SWOT ideas for a local coffee shop. Now keep in mind these are just ideas, so what you do is you look at these ideas, use some of them, modify some of them, and then build them into your SWOT for your business that you're looking at. Now I'm assuming we know what a SWOT is, so I'm not going to cover that again. But what I have on the board is strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And I'll go through each of the points fairly quickly for you. These are again just ideas to look at. First one, quality coffee. Very important for a coffee shop. So that may be we're using a premium brand and the standard of the coffee is quite high. Or it could be the way we make it. We could have very skilled staff uh, and all those things come together and create the perception in consumers' minds that we have high quality coffee. We could have an ideal location, busy area or a convenient area or somewhere there's parking that makes life easy. It could be near a school or a business or something like that. So all those things are important. Service scape. Service scape means the look the feel, the atmosphere of the store. Now when we go for coffee, we want great coffee, yes. We want a convenient location, yes. But we also want somewhere where we can sit and it's comfortable and it's enjoyment and it feels good. So service scape and atmosphere are important. Could be size and seating. So no doubt you've gone to a restaurant or a coffee shop where you just feel really closed in, the seats are close together, and you sort of, excuse me, I just got to get out. Not very nice. So it could be quite spacious. We could have a choice of seating. There could be some lounge chairs, or there could be um, high chairs, outdoor seating, etc. Those provide us some options. We could have high quality staff, great service, and people that like do it going there and the customers like dealing with us. Different ordering options. We could order through a QR code, an app, go to the counter, people come to us, could be potentially a drive-through offering. All those things create strengths for the business. We could have very positive customer relationships. Now some businesses work hard to know the customer, learn their name, know what coffee order they want, and there's a rapport built up and there's almost like a friendship. And once you create that, that customer is unlikely to go anywhere else because people know you. Okay, the customer goes somewhere else and you're just another new customer and it, has, it doesn't have the same feeling or vibe. Having good reviews online, big strength in today's world. A lot of customers looking around will Google or search and see reviews and go, good reviews, I'll go there. Oh gee, I won't go there. So that's a strength if we can have those reviews. Quality food tied with quality coffee. Not only do we have great coffee, we've got great food. And that means our sales go up, our retention of customers go up. We could have speed of service. So not just great service, but we make coffees very quickly. Uh, in some businesses, you may go order and you're sitting there for 10, 15 minutes, and, which is not a long period of time, but when it comes to coffee, you, you think that's a bit too long. And it could be a buzz of the customer. And what, what I mean by that, think about a restaurant or a coffee shop that you've walked past and one looks quiet, there's hardly anyone in there and it seems a bit dead. And then you go past another one, it's lively, there's lots of people, people are having loud conversations, they seem to be enjoying ourselves. Let's call that the buzz of the customer. So that will attract you can't say, oh, that's popular, that looks good, that looks interesting. We should go there as opposed to the quiet place. So these are all strengths that a coffee shop could have. Okay, let's jump across now to weaknesses. Now, keep in mind when you're constructing your SWOT, some of these things could sit here and all over there depending upon the business that you're looking at. Okay, so for example, I've got location in both spots. So location could be a strength, or it could be a poor location, which is a weakness. Another disadvantage or weakness for a, a local coffee shop is could be a single store. Obviously that limits our growth potential, our sales, our reach, our brand. So we may address that down in opportunities. We could have high, customer, high costs per customer. 
And what that means is customers come in and they order one coffee. And that's all the money we get from them. And to provide that coffee, we've got to rent a premises, we've got to hire staff, we've got to get the coffee in, we've got the packaging, we've got cleaning, insurance, etc. So we've got a lot of cost for that one sale. So that could be a concern for us. That could happen through lack of cross-sell. So our staff may not be excited about cross-sell. So when somebody comes in and says, I'll have a coffee, they should say, oh gee, we've got this cake today. Uh, it's delicious, you should try some, or another product. So as you know, when you go to McDonald's and you ask for one item, they typically say, what about this? A drink, some fries, something else, a combo deal, and upsize, away we go. They're very good at cross-selling. So maybe that's a weakness we have. No data analysis. Now, this is a small business, unlikely to analyze any data. So we would track sales and costs, no doubt, that produce a profit and loss, but which products are selling? What times of the day? How much is each customer spending? If we have a loyalty program, you know, how, what's our customer retention? All of those things could be very helpful in working out perhaps combo deals, times of the day to have discount pricing to attract people, um, how effective is our loyalty program, do we need to ramp it up, make it more incentivized? So all of those things, a little, little bit of analysis, I'm not talking lots about analytics, but just get some insights about how the business runs. We may not have a website. This may not be an important factor for a coffee shop, but occasionally there is new people or travelers or tourists who Google uh, or search somehow for a local business. And if we don't come up, there's no address, there's no menu, there's no opening hours, that's going to detract and they will go somewhere else. We may have limited online reviews. So people are looking for reviews, new customers, and we have two or three reviews. That means we're not very popular and the credibility of those scores isn't a lot because it's only across two or three people. So that's going to be a weakness attracting new people. We may have limited resources, so we may lack time if it's a family business, we may lack money to grow the business. Um, so those sort of things are going to hold us back. We could have high rental costs, so we could have a great location and the rent is quite, quite high, so not, not great. And we may be reliant on regular customers. Now we want regular customers, they are vital to any business, people who keep coming in. But if that's all we've got, if we don't have new customers coming in, this business is not going to grow. Okay, let's jump down to opportunities. Now again, there's lots of ideas here. You pick the ones you want to pursue. Typically in a, in a plan, we would take these opportunities and prioritize and select some and they become the basis of our plan. There's too many things here to explore, but let's have a look. We may want to introduce some sort of loyalty program. They're designed to capture data, they're designed to keep customers coming back and they're designed to increase levels of sales. We may want to expand our menu. Okay, we could add more coffee options, food options and keep growing our income that way. That gives us something to cross sell and hopefully our sales per customer go up. So as you can see, we're crossing off some of these weaknesses if they do exist and growing the business at the same time. If we've only got one or two stores, we could look at new stores. Obviously that's very expensive. Uh, rental costs, the fit out costs. So maybe we could look at franchising and pass the cost to a franchisee while we pick up a, a percentage. So most fast food places tend to have a franchise model and that's why they're able to grow into thousands of stores. They're not actually upfronting the capital themselves. That's passed to an individual who wants to be a business owner. So that could be a great opportunity. Looking at home delivery, if we don't have it, looking at app ordering, uh, perhaps a QR menu in, in the store, bit of technology, we may or may not have those things. Uh, partnering with food delivery places like Uber Eats, obviously that's going to expand our reach and our sales. Even publicity things like drone delivery, uh, that sounds a bit unusual, but I've seen 
um, that that's been experimented with in some cities where drone delivery of food and coffee is happening. So that would not only be a novel way, but obviously get us into the media, get our brand up as well. Some form of co-branding we could look at. So that's when we partner in a store with another well-known brand. So you may see that at Walmart, uh, a big outside store, and in Walmart they might have a fast food outlet, coffee shop or something else, in, and that's it, two or three stores. And it almost seems to be part of Walmart, so because you have to walk through the Walmart door and then the other brands are sitting at the side. So that would give us credibility. We're almost being endorsed by Walmart. So that obviously gives us a lot of a great location, a lot of people, but it also emphasizes and builds our brand. If necessary, we might need to increase our level of service, um, change our relationships, etc. Some of these things are being matched off. We may look at self-serve options. So potentially if somebody just wants a simple coffee, a straight coffee, they can go to a refill station once they've got it. So that adds value to the customer uh, fairly cheaply because when there's no staff involved and that should uh, help customer retention as well. If necessary, increase our level of promotion in the area to attract local people and to look at things like book clubs and events and those sort of things. So as a coffee shop, we're probably busy from early morning to around lunchtime and then most of our sales are, have happened, 90% of our sales. So maybe an afternoon or a night event, function, book club, because we've got this quiet, we've got this asset that's not being utilized. So when you think about it, something like McDonald's went through many years ago, decades ago, and said, nobody comes into a McDonald's store before 11. We have thousands of stores throughout the world, yet in the morning, nobody. So they invented breakfast menus, they had the coffee themselves, and now McDonald's stores operate 24 seven. So can we leverage the afternoon or night time? We're paying rent, uh, we've got all the coffee and the facilities there, here's an opportunity for us. Okay, threats. We have obviously increased coffee prices throughout the world currently and inflation factors to keep driving that up, not just coffee prices, but all our costs. So cost is going to be a problem. Supply chain reputation. Some coffee is sourced from uh, companies or countries that don't involve fair trade practice. So some consumers are very concerned about that. So we have to ensure that that's not a problem for us. And in today's world, there's an expectation that many businesses are somehow involved in social good or uh, environmental factors. For example, for us, that could be recycling of our packaging. Is it environmentally friendly? Again, this becomes a th potential threat that some consumers and potential local media uh, say that, hey, this coffee shop's not doing the right thing. And so it's something to keep our eye on. Health, cleanliness issues, sort of important again in today's world. Uh, people are concerned with uh, disease and infection. So again, we don't want to risk any negative publicity or negative reviews happening in that regard. In every SWAT, you will see competition. That means new competitors, new stores opening, existing competitors expanding or becoming more aggressive in terms of their promotion and pricing. Bargaining power in the channel. So what that means is for us, it's our, our landlord, our rental costs, the supply costs of, of coffee. As a small business, we have limited bargaining power. So if our coffee supplier turns up and says, coffee prices are going up 20%, we got nothing. We just gotta say, okay, yep, all right. And then what do we do? We either squeeze our margin or pass those increased prices on to customers. Some of those will not be happy because there's competitors. So that puts us at risk, it's a, a significant threat. And if we, there's a poor service encounter, an unhappy customer or something, we could end up with poor online reviews. And as a small business with limited number of reviews, that could change our rating from four plus to less than four if we get a couple of people there. Okay, now at the outside, I've got some, some red marks. So what this means is how we use this now in our planning.
So strengths, we've got to maintain these. This is very important. This is the foundation of the business. This is how we're successful. This is what is going to drive us forward. This is our competitive advantage. So we have to maintain, protect and enhance these. Then I've got this arrow working between strengths and opportunities. Again, critical. Uh, in marketing and in, in any business practice, we need to leverage our strengths to our opportunities. We can't do all of these, uh, especially as a small business. We need to pick the ones that create the best opportunity for growth and the ones we can execute the best uh, in relative our, to our competition. And we try to match strengths to opportunities. Okay, so very important in terms of strategy development. And here, weaknesses and threats, I have question marks. And that means, do we bother? So we go through and say, which ones of these are holding the business back? Which ones are really going to restrict us? And which ones, well, we can't be good at everything. They're the ones we're not going to be good at. So we've got to work out the ones that are going to have a strategic growth profit impact and try to fix those or mitigate those in some regard. The rest we ignore. Like going through school or university, you're great at certain subjects and that's your future, your future career and other topics you're not that great at. You ignore them and focus on your strengths because that's where you're going in life. The same thing here. Some of these things we're just not going to be good at. So what? We've got lots of strengths. And the same thing with threats, we evaluate them. We go through and say this one, if this happens, it's going to be significant and it's a fairly high likelihood of happening, so we need to address that. If it's a low likelihood or it's not really going to impact us, we just ignore it. So hopefully that was good information for you. What I have in the links down below, link to more information about constructing uh, a SWOT and also more importantly a link to an Excel template so you can build a SWOT within minutes. There's over 400 different elements you can choose from plus you can add your own. If you don't use Excel, don't worry, very easy to use. You just tick the ones you want and the SWOT is automatically produced. So if you enjoyed this video please like it and please subscribe to my channel.